As far as I'm concerned, watching Will Smith slap the dog piss out of Chris Rock at the Oscars and now knowing that he did that while he was living single. Will Smith slapped the dog piss out of Chris Rock on the Oscar stage while he was living hey, single. See, we could act out like Will and Jada. Mm. Oh, like a more uh -uh, uh -uh, girl, that ain't it. That ain't it, girl. That ain't it. That song ain't age well, child. Yes, pick another song. Mm-hmm. Damn, you right. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That ain't it. Well, on that note, welcome to Black Women's Pull That Black Titty Out and Check It Month. What's up, y'all? It's your sister. Welcome back to my Chanel. Uh, if you're coming back, thank you so much. If you're a sister, thank you so much. And if you're not a sister, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, child. It's very lit over here. Um, before we get into this episode of just a couple of things, I do want to bring up like a new segment that I want to add to these videos. It's my be for fucking for real. Be for fucking for real segment. Because Alicia, what the fuck was up? with these song lyrics <laughs> what the hell was going on with these song lyrics can we please get into that like i'm sorry we could fight like argentina girl what <laughs> like excuse me what girl no that's not how that went okay um be for fucking for real okay and then onto that too you know lately i've just been like going back and paying attention to like certain song lyrics and the fact that a lot of these women was telling us that like we could struggle like you know what i mean oh we could struggle like flow what 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 she said Oh, instead, struggle like Flo and James Evans. Like, did you ever watch Good Times? Name me one good time. Like, the theme song literally was keeping our head above water. Good time. It was nothing good about them times, okay? Like, why would I want to struggle like Flo and James Evans? No, ma'am. That's not God's plan for my life. Be for fucking for real. Um, I definitely want to start doing a be for fucking for real segment because some of these song lyrics, uh, when you go back and you listen to them, it's like, girl, what were you talking about? Sir, what were you talking about? So, if you have be for fucking for real song lyrics that you want to suggest to me, please go ahead and feel free and suggest them in um my comment section um but yeah y'all i'm literally gonna rush through these topics because i'm trying to do this before the next love is blind is out and so i'm trying i'm gonna try to have this out before the next love is blind review you know the weddings is coming up and i haven't done a just a couple of things um in a minute so i was like okay let me go ahead and try to fit this in now again before i continue with this if you bought me a housewoman gift if you bought me a housewoman gift Please email just a couple of things at gmail.com. The, you know, the, the, the email is going to be right here. All right. Please send me an email with your receipt. Okay. I must see your receipt. Um, and I will send you the save the date for our uh, Friendsgiving dinner. I'm really, really excited. It's going to be lit. You do have a month. It's going to be in a month. Uh, so you do have a month's time. And, uh, and also, it will be in Atlanta, and no plus ones. Absolutely no plus ones, okay? No plus ones, period. All right, and so um, it's going to be really, really fun. I'm so, so excited to do this and spend time with y'all. Of course, like, so many of you guys show up, showed up for me. You bought me gifts, you know, to congratulate me on, you know, just this new chapter in my life, so I want to do something special for y'all and I want us to have a good time I want us to I want us to just be lit like period so I'll see you guys soon in Atlanta let's get into these topics you know I had to write a lot of things down because it's just so much with the 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 the, the Pinkett Smiths 
And you know, obviously yesterday Jada revealed on, it wasn't Good Morning, to, it was it was today. It was on the Today Show, I think. It was on, because I watch the, the news from my TV sometimes too. I think it was on NBC, I can't remember, but I think it was a Today Show. You know, Jada revealed that her and Will Smith have been separated and have been living separate lives for the last seven years. Am I the only one who wasn't shocked by that? Why, why were y'all so shocked by this information? I thought we all knew that these people, <laughs> that they were separate. Like, I, I, we've known them to be separated before. I, I thought that's something that we all knew, especially when they had addressed, you know, the whole entanglement moment. They addressed being separated in that episode. Like, when I would watch, I used to be a faithful Red Table Talk watch it like faithfully watch and i didn't just watch to react i used to watch to really understand i feel like i always i always had a special special admiration for jada pinkett smith and will smith i mean who doesn't like who who doesn't who doesn't like the smiths you know what i mean well a lot of y'all don't but i always loved admired them and so when jada started the red table talk i loved it and I've, i'm someone who has watched her career really, really closely. Like, I remember when she had a Hearthorn. I was like, girl, what happened to Hearthorn? Like, I was re I was so sad that that ended. Like, I've always admired Jada's career, her talent. I've always felt like she was a gifted actress. She's gorgeous. She just always had this aura about her that I just was always fucking obsessed with. Like, she's just a baddie. Like, she's a baddie. She's obviously, like, a classic 90s baddie. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so to me, Jada was always a staple in my household. So anything Jada did, I, I was always following. And, you know, we'll never, I'll never forget when she, like I said, when she came out with Red Table Talk, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to be watching this shit. I'm going to be down to the Red Table with my snacks. I'm going to be listening. She's had so many episodes that were very constructive, um, very, that hit home so many times, that addressed so many topics. But of course, within our community, the episodes that would always go viral were the episodes with her and Will. And of course, like the Jordan, um, the Jordan episode where she addressed the whole uh, Kardashian, Kardashian <clears throat> Jenna debacle where they tried to make her responsible for Tristan, <clears throat> Tristan Jamaican Dick uh, uh, Thompson. <laughs> Baby, if you ever been with a Jamaican man, you already know. Like, it's, it, it, it is not for the weak, okay? And they really tried to make her the the scapegoat for the fact that Tristian Tristian couldn't keep his fucking bacchanal uh, well that's not Jamaican but in his motherfucking pants okay and so yeah in our community those were always the topics that would go viral and I'm like yo like this lady literally had way better episodes that were way more constructive than these episodes but okay go off so here's my thing right so Jada reveals that uh, ahead of her memoir, she reveals that and what's, I, she already pre-ordered her book. Her book is going to drop next week. But anyway, a, a, ahead of her memoir, she shares that her and Will, and she also goes into detail about it in the book, that her and Will have been separated and have been living separately for the past seven years. I wasn't surprised by that. I wasn't shocked by that because unlike a lot of people on the internet, when I would be watching Red Table Talk, I would be watching to understand, not react. I'll be watching to understand not to get my tweets up and get my engagement up. Like I was watching to understand what the fuck was going on in these people marriage, especially because even pre red table talk, Will Smith and Jada Smith, their marriage has always been a hot topic of discussion. We've heard everything from them being swingers to them being swung on to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just a lot of shit going on. It's a lot of tussie rolling and pussy popping going on. Like we've also heard throughout the years, speculation of Will and his extramarital affairs. And so it wasn't a secret to me that they didn't have a conventional marriage. And so when, you know, the bomb was dropped that Jada had an entanglement, they addressed it. And I feel like a lot of people watched that episode to react and to get their tweets up instead of actually understanding the nuances of their relationship and what the entanglement was. They talked about pain, healing, and yes, Jada's entanglement with August Alsina. It's all love. 
Recently, Alcina revealed to the world that he was involved in a relationship with Jada while she was still married. And even though statements were released denying the affair, Pinkett Smith is now reluctantly confirming that the relationship did indeed exist. It's a situation that I consider private. You just feel like it ain't really nobody, no, nobody's, nobody's business. business yeah, but yeah. But now Black Twitter has <laughs> claimed it as their business. You and I were going through a very difficult time. Yeah. And we decided. I was done with your you, ass. Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was curve. done with you. Yeah. <laughs> we Marriages have that, though. Yeah, Marriages have that. Yeah, we basically, mm -hmm. we broke up. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> Yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a yeah. relationship, absolutely. We also got clarity on the misconception that Will gave August permission to sleep with his wife. The only person that could give permission in, in, in that particular uh, uh, yeah. circumstance is myself. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but what August was probably trying to communicate, mm -hmm. because I could actually see how he would perceive it as permission because we were separated mm -hmm. amicably yeah. and I think he also wanted to make it clear that he's not a homewrecker. I think also like for people who love to say oh like Jada like the, the Smiths especially Jada loves to overshare I think that a lot of y'all forget the fact that chronological order brings a lot of context to why they have discussed and addressed certain things for instance like the entanglement they didn't share that with us. They addressed it. They didn't, sh like, there's a difference. They didn't share that Jada had an entanglement. They addressed that. And while a lot of people will say, well, they didn't have to share it. They didn't have to address it. You know, like, Beyonce don't ever address nothing. Mm, I think that if you are a huge name in Hollywood, not just black Hollywood, but Hollywood, period, and you have a story come out that you had an entanglement, but not only did you have an entanglement, but the media starts to run with the story and say that you groom this person, that you sexualize this person, and they position this entanglement as a, well, you were way older than this person and you use religion and spirituality to groom and sexualize this person, I think y'all would address that. Cause see, we don't, that's pretty, that, that's a pretty wild accusation for you not to address. You have to, like, it's almost as if you have to address that. And mind you, by the time that story was shared, they had not been involved for what, like two, three years. And so the Smiths had no intentions of ever talking about that. But when the story came out, remember the media took that entanglement story, well before it was called an entanglement, they took that story and positioned it as if, and ran with it as if she was a groomer. She was a predator. There were even tweets. There were so many tweets that came forward that were calling her a predator. Like everybody was calling Jada Pinkett Smith a predator. So she had no choice but to address it. And to be honest, in my opinion, Will sticking by her side, especially now that we know that they weren't even together, addressing it in unison was a very noble thing to do and i think that a lot of y'all are just not used to seeing a man stick by his woman especially like in the entertainment space in the black entertainment space y'all are not y'all are not using to y'all are not used to seeing black men to, it's not a lot of black men who who are in the media who are faithful to sticking by their woman's side and having their backs. Y'all not used to seeing that. Y'all not using, used to seeing that in your everyday lives. And so the whole narratives that you guys try to push when it comes to Will and Jada, it's, it's really more reflective on you guys' experience in life. 
and the fact that you guys don't get to see a lot of positivity when it comes to a black man sticking by his black wife in the media, in the entertainment space and telling y'all, keep my wife's name the fuck out of your mouth, period. I'm going to stand behind, I'm going to stand beside her. Y'all not used to seeing that. We are not privy to the conversations that Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith had to have behind the scenes with brands, with partners, with investors when the media was pushing her to be a groomer. We're not privy to that. And so, of course, they had to address that. Did they want to? I think they had no intentions to ever address that, but they had to. It's a situation that I consider private. You just feel like it ain't really nobody, no, nobody's, nobody's business. Nobody's business, yeah, but... Yeah. But now Black Twitter has <laughs> claimed it as their business. Because it was out there. And there was a narrative being pushed. And so they had to talk about it. And the sad part is they talk about it and they were very transparent about it. And still, and still people still pushed even more false and harmful narratives, especially when it came to Jada Pinkett Smith. And keep in mind too that Jada Pinkett Smith, when it came to the whole ent entanglement thing, she was being ostracized and dragged in ways that we have never seen her counterparts get dragged. And when I say her counterparts, I mean like her white counterparts her male white counterparts. Like, how long did it take to bring Steve, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Harvey Weinstein down? After all the allegations? T like, uh, Tim Allen, is it Tim Allen? What's the, what's the old white uh, man who uh, went on to marry his adoptive, no, not Tim Allen. Um, what's that other guy? Um, who went to marry his adoptive daughter and also like it was uh out he was outed to be uh violating his own daughter no his wife's daughter woody allen shit chris rock do your research on allegations when it comes to chris rock we we never see men we never see white men. We never see non-black people really get this type of backlash the way that she did for having a consensual sexual relationship with someone who was 24 years old at the time. Literally, we've never seen that. And so, of course, they had to address that. And unfortunately for them, being transparent and addressing it and addressing it, they caught more fire for that. And it, it's just really insane, like to me. It's still something that's really puzzling to me. And it just shows how massage noir, misogyny, you know, racism, like it just shows how all of that works uh, when it comes to women, black women. It just shows how people in general, not just the media, but people in general, just really, really hate, just really, really hate women and black women period and so you're gonna get a certain level of backlash as a black woman that you're not going to see when it comes to your counterparts in this realm then you have the people who keep dissecting their man oh my god she need a free will let will go let will go and be happy she literally says in the interview she literally says in the interview i made a promise not to divorce and i just haven't been able to break that promise not only that, again, have y'all ever watched the Red Table Talk? Like, Jada and Will and her mother have sat down and told us several times, Jada never wanted to be married. I we went crying down the freaking aisle. I'll get married. Get married. Yeah. <laughs> Cried the whole way. <laughs> I really didn't want to get married, but... We only got married because... Gammy was crying. You know, being a young actress, being yeah. young, and, and I was just and like pregnant. pregnant. And I just, I was just like, I didn't know what to do. But I just knew, I was like, I never wanted to be married. The wedding was horrible. It was, horrible <laughs> it, it was a horrible It was a mess. Jada was sick. sick. She yeah, was yeah, very yeah, yeah. unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
wouldn't co. I thought she was sick. She, was she sick, yeah. didn't cooperate with anything. They were six anything. months pregnant at the wedding. No, I don't no. know how many. Three, three months. Three months pregnant. She never wanted the the white uh, Jada Pinkett fence. You know what I mean? She never wanted that shit. Like, and God forbid, God forbid, as a woman, that you don't want to be married, that you don't want, you know, the traditional uh, setup of a marriage, and, then, and that you don't want to be married to your child's father. Like, God forbid you don't want the, 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 the constructs that society has basically put together when it comes to marriage. They have all said her mother and Will basically forced her to walk down the aisle to Will Smith while she was sick and three months pregnant. She walked down the aisle crying because she didn't want to be married to this man. She didn't want to be married, period. She didn't want none of this shit. But because she loved him and because Will and her mother were adamant about it, she did it to satisfy everybody but herself. The fact that people are still villainizing this woman when the receipts are right there. She says she ain't want, I don't want it. Yo no quiero, papi. Yo no quiero mariage. How do you say, uh, Alexa? How do you say marriage in Spanish? Marriage in Spanish. Yo no quiero eh, matrimonia. Yo no quiero matrimonia. She says she ain't want it. Yo no quiero. Yo no quiero matrimonia. And she still move forward and did that for the person that she loved mind you on top of it all too you have will who has said even in his previous marriage he was in a loveless marriage but he was never going to divorce since the time he was five years old he knew he wanted to be married it wasn't a day in my life that i wanted anything other than being married and having a family. Wow. From like, well, thank the good Lord. Literally five years old, I was picturing what my family would be. He knew what kind, he wanted the marriage life. His first wife, the mother of his firstborn, had to slap him with divorce papers on Valentine's Day. And then she divorced you. And then Cherie, <laughs> she hit me hard. Cherie filed for divorce on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and I still told her, I said, no. Yeah. Wow. You can't have a divorce. She hit me with the, so you're going to make somebody stay with you who doesn't love you. Mm. And I was like, what? During black women's pull your black titty out and check it month, okay? She had to slap this motherfucker with divorce papers on Valentine's. Like, that's a huge message. What message was she trying to drive home? Like, Obviously, there's a pattern here with Will, and Will, when he did his memoir, he shared a lot of different things. He shared how, you know, basically he has a controlling nature where he has a picture of what things should be, and that is it. When he bought the home for Jada that they have, he didn't ask her what she wanted. He did it because this is what it should be, and you should be happy. I'm your husband. I'm doing all this for you. Instead of like, doing it in partnership and consulting with her. Mind you, this is a person who you, 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 it's just, you, 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 this is what she was crying on your wedding day. You would think further down the line in the marriage, you would learn to be more considerate, but his nature is, this is what it is. This is picture perfect. This, like you should, you should, you should appreciate that. Right. And I'm not saying that to villainize Will either, but he's very much a Libra and I have, <laughs> I cannot do Libra men. Um, but my experience with Libra men literally is they have this fake niceness about them, this fake way of presenting, ta-da, when behind the scenes, like, they're just, they have identity crises day in, day out. And I think when you read Will Smith's memoir, you'll be able to understand that. And so, despite all of this, these are two people who have been have, who have managed to be married and stay married for what 30 years over 30 years like i don't know to me it's more ab abner abnerable is it admirable admirable something like that it's i admire the fact that they are fighting for their marriage. This is what fighting for your marriage looks for. Some people are like, well, damn, damn, like this is a long fight. 
but to me this is what fighting for your marriage looks like we're not leaving we're going to fight we're going to figure it out if we have to be apart for a moment of time so be it but they seem to find their way to each other you know every time and when I look at their marriage, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I look at them and I say, yo, like, these, these are two people who are going to grow old together. And when they're old and gray, they'll be able to look back and say, damn, thank God we didn't let this go. I really do feel that way. Thank God. And if it's not that, if it, well, thank God I got, I still got you. You going to go ahead and run down to the, uh, to the, to CVS and get my blood pressure medicine. Like, thank you. You know what I mean? Like my heart, my heart medicine. Thank you. Like they'll at least have that. They'll at least have something that we don't see nowadays. Ain't nobody fighting for shit. Ain't nobody fighting for shit when it comes to relationships nowadays. Everybody wants something very microwavable and they get quick satisfaction and then they're gone. It, it's the thrill is gone. They're done. They're done. So again, I really just don't think that y'all are used to seeing two people be transparent about the fact that they're in a bad marriage. <laughs> Like we literally have these two people who've sat down at the red table and said, we ride together, we die together, bad marriage for life. We ride together, we, we die, die together, together. Bad, bad marriage, marriage for, for life. life. <laughs> they said this, you know what I'm saying? And so to me, I don't feel, I cannot villainize them for that. I just, I don't know, I can't. And I don't think that Will is making her look bad or she's making Will look bad. I think that this is all a reflection on you guys. The fact that y'all are so uncomfortable by, a, by, by seeing a man stick by his wife through thick and thin, through public scrutiny. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to stick by her so much so that I'm going to slap the dog shit out of this motherfucker for talking about my wife's hair, even though we ain't together. Then a lot of y'all are upset that Jada Pinkett Smith is revealing that like Chris Rock tried to date her when he heard a rumor that was untrue about her and Will Smith not being together anymore. Like Chris Rock literally heard that she wasn't with Will Smith through, through, through the grapevine somewhere and he didn't hit her up to say, hey, you know, I'm here for you as a friend. I'm sorry to hear about what you're going through. You know, wow, like, is there anything I could do to help you guys? No, nah, it was... Can I take you to dinner? Can I take you to dinner? Can I take you out? He literally hit her with, excuse me, miss. What's your name? Where are you from? Can I come over me? Can I take you out tonight? To the movies, to the park. I have a home before. It's like, this motherfucker, <laughs> this motherfucker who is literally friends with these people. Like, it's very documented. These are friends, okay? Instead of calling her to check upon her as a friend, check upon her as a human being, it was, can I take you to dinner? Can I suck on that pussy at the end of the night? You know, like, like, you know what I'm saying? That's how he approached her. Like, y'all think that's crazy? That's fucking crazy, okay? Especially considering the fact that this is a woman who you have publicly shitted on for boycotting the Oscars because the Oscars were being very racist with their nominations and you went on to host the Oscars and shit on her on the Oscars stage and say I mean girl you and Will wasn't even invited we don't give a fuck about that damn movie where he was playing that African doctor we don't care you know what I'm saying you doing that to a fellow black colleague you know for white gays and mind you there are so many compilations here on YouTube that you can find of Chris Rock throwing shots at Jada Pinkett Smith throughout the years. It was personal. It was personal, right? And, and, and also, add this to context too. You're talking about Chris Rock, whose younger brother, Tony Rock, was given a TV show by Will Smith on a major network. Do you guys remember all of us? Nothing I wish that we could take the time to see Never in a me, a family, yeah Not all of us Never in a Times and seasons change but we will still remain This is all 
This is all of us. It's just, just all of us. I think that's how the jingle goes. <laughs> I used to love the jingle. But remember Tony Rock? He had the show with Elise Neal with, um, oh Lord, Lisa Ray. You know what I'm saying? Like, Will Smith gave you something that nobody in Hollywood was giving you. You know what I'm saying? And you watched your brother disrespect him time and time again and then disrespect his wife on the Oscar stage and felt disrespected by that by that slap. Listen, like y'all got to put things into there's layers to this shit. That slap wasn't just because of Jada's hair. It wasn't just because of that. It was because this man has been disrespecting them and their marriage for years <laughs> like for fucking years and literally by all accounts these two people were nothing but good to chris rock and his fucking brother like what the fuck then you wait till hollywood's biggest night you know that they haven't been to the oscars in in in, in six years and this is their comeback you know like everybody knew he, Will Smith was a top contender for that Oscar, and that's what you decided to do. It, for me, it was, and, 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 and side note too, people say, oh, why is she bringing this up? Did Chris Rock just have a whole special at the top of this year on Netflix, and the whole hype around it was him being slapped at the Oscars? What was the name of that, that, that special? Um, what was the name of the special, child? I can't remember. Selective Outrage? He literally used the Oscar slap went on tour immediately, talked about it on stage, got on Netflix, talked about it. And so why can't Jada talk about it too? For her book. Like, it's the misogyny for me. It be the misogyny for me. Like, y'all really, just say you hate black women. <laughs> Just say you hate black women. As far as I'm concerned, watching Will Smith slap the dog piss out of Chris Rock at the Oscars and now knowing that he did that while he was living single. <laughs> Will Smith slapped the dog shit. Will Smith slapped the dog piss out of Chris Rock on the Oscar stage while he was living hey, single. Ooh, and <laughs> Bitch, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Shit, that makes him look better in my book. Period. I'm gonna stick beside her. Period. And you're not gonna disrespect her. I don't give a fuck what's going on with us and our marriage or whatever the fuck. I'm going to stick beside her. And I feel like a lot of y'all are just uncomfortable with that because y'all are not used to seeing black women have a strong black women. Y'all are not used to seeing black women being stuck by the way we're seeing Will Smith stick by his wife. I hope they stick together for until until the end of time. They stick together, loving you weather, weather. Times are good, bad, happy, a sad. That's what I'm talking about. That's what that's that's marriage. That is marriage. Um, yeah, y'all. So anyway, moving along, child. Have y'all been watching any leaks uh, YouTube channel? I've been watching it and the last video that she posted over the weekend, I literally, I saw it pop up and I watched it like probably like within an hour of her posting it. I cried. I cried for this woman. Side note, if you haven't seen Nene's interview with Bethany Frankel, baby, they Aaron Bravo and, and Andy Cohen the fuck out. Maybe, my gosh. My gosh. I just know Andy is some somewhere shaking in his product loafers. Baby, they airing your ass the fuck out. They airing Bra Bravo out. They doing a lot. And, and I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see Nene get, have some support from someone else, especially someone who's not black. And, and, and somebody like Bethany Frankel, who's literally been saying the same thing that Nene's been saying for years, but now you have Bethany Frankel having meetings with SAG after about unionizing reality television and reality television uh, 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 um, 
personalities, which is amazing, which is great, which should happen, which should and definitely happen. But it's crazy because the black woman's been saying shit for years and nobody gives a fuck when, when, when the black woman says it, including other black people. I've seen black people drag Nene left and right for saying things that are true about her experience on the show and the fact that Nene has not been half of a problem as her non-black counterparts who have thrown tables, who have gone to jail, who have had some, who have brought crazy shit to the screen and crazy shit to the media, yet she's gotten the fucking like, the black girl treatment. And so it's really been great to see her interview with Bethany Frankel. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. It's really good. But um, Nene posted a video over the weekend and she was just talking about like just her dating woes in her 50s and you know saying that you know she does like to date men that are younger but it seems like in her her last relationship she did have a lot of like mishaps in it side note nini stop showing that african man stop showing him stop showing that african man girl let me tell you something i didn't realize he was fine like that I didn't realize that man looked that good. Like, I was sitting here with my friend Sasha watching that. We was like, wait a minute. We, I've seen, like, the photos and stuff, but seeing y'all ride around in the car and everything, I was like, hold on now, bitch. Don't be showing that man like that. First, this is Atlanta. Nene, you are in Atlanta. These Africans got the Atlanta dating scene in a chokehold. I already done told y'all that. It's three Africans right now at the center of African dating. And the bitches are killing each other over these three African men. Okay? You about to make him the fourth one. Stop showing him. Please. I'm telling you for your own sake. If you're going to keep dating this man, stop showing him. Because the girlies, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to tussle. You are going to fight. You are, you are going to have, you, you will have to tussle. Oh. You will have to tussle, oh. okay? I'm telling you, this is not what you want. But she went on to talk about how she had a, a doctor's visit. And at the doctor's visit, they were asking her for her emergency contact. I was telling her that um, I recently had this doctor's appointment. And, you know, when you go to the doctor, sometimes they have they give you a clipboard and tell you to fill out all this information and stuff. So I was filling out the information and they asked for my emergency contact. And I got really emotional in the office. It came out of nowhere because I literally was looking at the paper like emergency contact. Like, who is my emergency contact or who is it that I will want somebody to call? in case something happens and I um in any uh any other case I would have the, to reach out to my husband and so I had to start thinking about like who my emergency contact would be and my emergency contact. Um, I put my son down as my emergency contact. In the past, I listed my husband as my emergency contact. So I start thinking and saying, um, you know, maybe I should just marry whether I'm 100% happy with the person or not. Maybe I should marry just so that I have a partner, you know, a partner for life, right? And I was thinking about having a partner for life, even though I know the person isn't right for me. I'm just thinking, having a partner for life, at least there's someone, maybe we would have an agreement that this person would be there for me and I would be there for them. Y'all, I cried. I cried watching that. I cried watching that. And it's so sad because Nene had a great husband. Like, We'll never see a Greg Leaks. Well, not Greg. <laughs> we'll never see a Greg again in reality television. I don't think we'll ever see that again. 
that was such a good man. He was such a good man. And yeah, they had their woes, but man, it was such a good, healthy, for, 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 for the most part, marriage. And it was, it was, it was a healthy portrayal of a marriage, a black marriage, you know, a man who wanted to do for his wife. And the fact that things started crumbling with them because Greg started feeling like she didn't need him anymore. To me, some people would see that as, oh, he just, to me, I saw that as, oh my God, like he wanted to be the one to give her everything she needed. And there's two ways to look at that, right? But I think it was, in Greg's case, it was noble. He wanted to be the one to be the provider for her. He didn't want me to want for anything. He didn't want me to have to, you know, to hustle and bustle for anything in life. He wanted to be able to, to, to shower her with things and to bless her with things as a, as a husband. And so like to see that, it really made me sad. It made me sad and it makes me think again of Will and Jada, right? A lot of y'all are saying, oh, well, they need a divorce. For what? Divorce for what? Where is Will going to get another Jada? Where is Jada going to get another Will? What they have built takes a lifetime to build. And they have entities that will live on past them too. Why would they want to break that? Why would they want to break that? They married with a purpose. Greg married Nene with a purpose. These are these were purposeful marriages. You don't just find that. It takes time to find that. And it's just sad because in Nini's case, she unfortunately lost her husband to, you know, to sickness. And she didn't, she just wasn't going out back into the streets. You know what I'm saying? So it's just so sad to see. Um damn. Do y'all think she should just marry? Like, I say yes, girl. Find you the best one, marry them, lock it down, and have your partner. Have your partner. Do y'all see the way life is going right now? We are in the end of days. <laughs> we are in the end of days, baby. These are, these are the last days. My grandma used to always say that shit, and now I'm like, yeah, my grandma was right. Mm -hmm. 93 years of being right. My goodness. We are in the fucking end of days. If you find someone and you can make it work, make it work and hold on to each other and build something together, point blank period. Okay, and still like talking about dating a little bit, I wanted to get into Kayla Nicole. So Kayla Nicole the other day, she posted this poem that I thought was so, so, so beautiful. Hey guys, Kayla here. It's always been really important for me to use my platform not to create division, but to elevate and unite women, Black women specifically. So I prepared a letter and would like to share it with you today. Dear Black girl, they may call you a traitor for falling in love. You'll hope the ones closest will protect you, but you will quickly find out that people don't protect what they don't value. They'll say you're too much, too provocative, too boisterous, too outspoken, and in the same breath tell you that you're not enough, not successful enough, not wholesome enough, maybe not even intelligent enough. They'll say you deserve the backlash and embarrassment. Because of your blackness, you should have known better. They'll even try to tie your value to your net worth. But black girl, please remember your value lies elsewhere. Your value is deep within your heart, the way you love, the way you give. Your value is in your resilience your willingness to forgive. Um, I've met Kayla a couple times and we follow each other on socials. Very, very nice girl, smart girl, educated girl. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the internet has been dragging this woman for filth all because her ex is now dating, you know, a very popular singer. And I don't really think much of guys. I really do. I really don't. I, I don't think much of men a lot of times, which is crazy because the men that I know, the men, the male friends that I have in my life, 
like the men the men that I'm cool with that are in the industry they're all really good men really stand-up men you know like in real life I do know a lot of great men but still I still don't expect much from men because I really do feel like at their very core men are stupid and so I wasn't surprised to see black men black men doing a aha when they were able to somehow speculate that Kayla was being treated badly in her relation in her last relationship and you know the men took to socials and I mean my goodness they've been having a field day for like over a year just enjoying it and it's crazy to me because I'm seeing a bunch of men dragging Kayla LaCole and these are men who wouldn't even be able to catch a sniff of this woman's fart even if they tried yet they are happily taking their fingers to twitter they are making their their podcasts they are making their podcasts every day you don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything it's twitter it's tiktoking they are literally dragging a woman that they couldn't even pay to get next to or they would have to pay to get next to literally a woman who wouldn't look at them twice and now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm like, damn, maybe that's the reason why they're dragging her. And then to you girls, too, who are dragging her online for her poem or whatever speculations that you guys have. Jealousy is real because it's like, what else? This girl has never said anything. This girl hardly speaks. Unless it's time for her to do some commentating for sports or or for her to do her content. Like, y'all do know when you guys are dragging Kayla Nicole, it doesn't mean that the men are going to pick y'all. These men, they're not going to pick you guys. They're not going to pick you, sis. You're not going to get picked. A, a lot of you think that, oh, let me go ahead and align myself with a little misogyny, and that's going to give you some brownie points. No, ma'am. They going to eat your brownies, yeah, but then they're going to move on to the next. Sis, like, it's th they're not going to pick you. Let the girl make her poem. She didn't say nothing about nothing y'all talking about. Bitches can't, like, what the fuck? So Maya Angelou, the only, the only black women who could put together a poem? Like, it's so crazy. Like, oh, so she thinks she Maya Angelou. Is that the only black poet y'all know? During black women's pull your black titty out and check it month. Like, are y'all for real? Are y'all put like listen, fold y'all's titties back up and go mind the business that should be minding you. Okay? Fold y'all's titties back up and go on about your business. Mind your business. Like, this is not it. Leave that girl alone. Like, why are you guys so happy to see this woman get dragged so badly this woman who's done nothing to anyone nothing to anyone but data wigger which is uh, that's another topic for another day but maybe me whenever i see anyone any black woman dating a wigger i'm just like yeah no girl mm -mm, no that's one thing about me i'm not gonna date no wigger okay mm -mm. If I'm gonna date me a white man he's gonna be a white man my mom always told me from the time I was little she always told me Jessica swap men on blanc swap men on blanc men on bon blanc Jessica swap men on blanc men on bon blanc in other words if you gonna bring me a white bring me a white okay bring me a white man all right not no nigga adjacent whitey no 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 bring me a white man okay not no nigga adjacent white man who's having an identity crisis or nothing like that no mm -mm. don't bring me a white man with several black baby mamas no absolutely not Whenever I see anybody that I know or any black woman doing that, I'm just like, yeah, girl, no. You might as well just go date a black guy. Why are you dating someone who, who's white who's trying to be black adjacent? 
Why are you dating a black guy just because he knows how to whip and nene? No, no. Oh my God, <laughs> he know how to whip and nene? No, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am, no. If I'm gonna date me a white, I need to be able to look through your ancestry and be ashamed. <laughs> Period. And I'm, I'm dead ass serious about that shit. Why am I going to date a white man who's trying to be black? No. No. What are the benefits to that? <laughs> what the fuck are the benefits to that? If I'm going to betray my Haitian ancestors, I'm going to betray my Haitian ancestors. <laughs> okay, bitch? I'm going to date me somebody who my ancestors would be ashamed that I'm dating. Or marry and or marry. I'm not gonna date no white man who's trying to be black. No, sir, Bob. Okay, no, no. Anytime I see that shit, I'm like, good luck, good fucking luck. All right, y'all. Last thing I want to do during this <laughs> just a couple things episode, child. I want to bring y'all this TikTok that I found. Maybe I'll do this um after every just a couple things. But y'all. <laughs> Just watch it. Just, just watch this yeah, shit. Y'all, so today I linked with this nigga I met a few weeks ago out with my friends. This nigga been texting me for weeks talking to himself. Why I didn't block him? Bitch, I don't know. But today I was bored and I had time, so he texted me like, can we meet for drinks? And I'm like, yeah, meet me here. They got the best fucking oysters in Atlanta, like, hands down. So I'm like, yes, yeah, so I can get some content. Come on. It's so good. This is <laughs> the slurping for me. Oh my god. Not three trays. Oh, she's busting these shits down. <laughs> it's giving mommy. Mm, 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 mm. mm, mm, mm. Y'all, when the fourth one came out, he was looking at me crazy. I didn't give a fuck. I'm like, baby, you invited me out. I'm going to eat. And I was coming anyway. But I ain't going to lie. No, I wouldn't have did all that. But I did do all that. That was so good. I was not expecting it to be that good. Mm. Oh my God. It was just so good. Like, I just, I had to. It was so good. I had to. So after that, mm. I'm like, baby. Mm, not a drink. Oh, she on two drinks. I'm about to eat these potatoes. Mm, they were so good. She had an entree. And her cakes. Everything was so good. 10, 10, baby. Why the fuck this bitch ass nigga say he going to the bathroom and never come back? <laughs> the fuck? I'm like, hold the fuck on. It's been like 10, 20, 30 minutes, bitch. What the fuck this nigga at? I had to end up grabbing a tab, bitch. Nigga left me with his little one fucking drink. Yeah, bitch. I'm so glad, bitch. Keep me some money. Cause what? That was crazy to me. And I said, bitch, you run out on the tab. He's talking about I'm offering you to drink. What the fuck are you talking about, bitch? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to... Yo, first of all, I'm definitely going to Fontaine's. I love oysters. And um, my favorite place to eat oysters in Atlanta is Hal's. I love Hal's restaurant. It is so bomb they have amazing drinks um it's a steakhouse but they have really good seafood like it is actually a uh, fucking amazing and their oysters are like new orleans uh, new orleans style charred oysters amazing girl how do you eat four trays of oysters now i could see two three <laughs> was pushing it four and then you have an entree and then sis had like four drinks and i think she was eating i think she was drinking water too she had like four lemon drops <laughs> like what the fuck is going on so then to me i'm just mind you you can see some people are like oh there was nobody at the table you can see his shirt in the corner like his shirt is definitely there but i'm just like okay as if i were him i'd be thinking well then like are you even here to date you recording everything you eating like like what are we like did y'all even have any conversation <laughs> what the fuck is going on like do y'all think when y'all are out on a date that y'all should take it easy with ordering the food like 
not even on some like budget, but just like, okay, if you're on a date with someone, right? Shouldn't you be there to converse with this person? But then when I think back to the to the beginning of the, of the video, she did say this motherfucker been texting me. He been, he just been texting and talking to himself. So it's obviously she wasn't interested and she obviously was looking for a free date. You know what I'm saying? So uh, <laughs> y'all think he should have left her though? That's kind of wild. Like that's fucking wild. Uh, he said, she said running out on the tab is crazy. He said, I offer to take you out for drinks and you order all that food. I can cash out the total for the drinks. Oh, so he didn't expect her to eat? Like when y'all, when men invite you out for drinks, are they inviting you out just for drinks? They don't expect you to eat? Like what's, what? and then to be honest, I mean, yes, sis did the most, but like the oyster trays were $15. So let's calculate. Let's bring out the calculator. Because that's the, the, the other thing, too, is y'all motherfuckers don't be having a, a date budget. Y'all be going on these dates and y'all don't be ready to pay for shit. Okay, 15 times 4, 60. She had about four lemon drops. I'm going to say this lemon drops are probably like $16. That's 64 plus 60. That's 124. I wonder if he just didn't have a full budget. Cause I saw somewhere else too. Y'all always talking about two hundred dollar dates or whatever. That was just her her portion of the date. We don't know. She said he only got one drink. So so he gonna be paying for the drinks. That it, I need a follow up to this. Did he pay for the drinks? Did y'all converse about like was it a budget thing or was he just upset that you weren't paying attention? But obviously too, I think sis didn't give a fuck. So she gonna get her sixty four dollars for her drinks and she gonna just just keep it moving. Let me know what y'all, I'm sorry, this TikTok is hilarious. Like, I screamed when I initially watched this. It, it's ridiculous. And I've watched it way too many times. Let me know if, if you are in Atlanta. Let me know if you've tried Fontaine's before. I definitely plan on sliding through Fontaine's to try them oysters. And yeah, that's it, y'all. That's it for this episode of Just a Couple Things Chat. Go ahead, drop that in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Like, share, subscribe. Again, if you bought a housewarming gift, check your email. I just sent, I am sending the, uh, uh, save the dates, okay? We will be having a location change as well. So, save the date. When you get the location, shut up. Shut your, shut your freaking mouths. <laughs> shut your freaking mouths, okay? This is only for us, okay? All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.